Welcome back, Washington Walk-Ons fans. Uh, today, we got a special one for you because the king of the Walk-Ons has decided to grace our presence again. Uh, Mark Wiseman, thank you very much for coming back and hanging with us. Uh, been too long, and it's going to be good to catch up. Yeah, no doubt, fellas. Uh, it, it is too long. Like I had to go back and listen to the old one just to make sure I don't repeat myself, which I probably still will. See we're okay if you do. You know? Yeah, we all got it, so we're we, good. We got no. new listeners, man. I'm sure they'd, they would always uh, like to – rehash what we've gone over before that they didn't they didn't listen to beforehand that's fair but yeah that was in 2001 i thought i thought it was just, i thought it was 2001 yeah. shit man i was seven <laughs> <laughs> 21 2021 oh fuck me yeah there you go there's, 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 there's a little there's a little kf right there mark oh there fuck me huh? <laughs> shit okay <laughs> uh yeah we're happy to but, have you back um, You've uh you you've moved around the last couple of years since the last time we talked to you on the podcast now. Huh? Yeah, so I can go from there. So mm-hmm. before I was in Illinois at um, suburb of Illinois, Chicago at a private facility, and then from there, definitely was trying to get out. And there was a couple opportunities more in the college mm-hmm. realm of it, and I was interviewing for a couple things there. And then one of my buddies grew up with knew him since I was like nine and he's like hey would you be interested like in working in baseball we've had a lot of turnover here with the Cubs he's a hitting coordinator with the Cubs so I'm like sure I'll take a call took a call went well didn't hear back from it for months no big deal and then the other one started escalating a little bit more and a couple offers were out there he calls again said the same thing took a call again one thing led to another and it's like if I hate it, like if I hate being in baseball and then I'll just go back to do something else. No big deal. So ended up doing that was with him in Myrtle Beach, which is a low A affiliate for the Cubs. Okay. So that was a lot. great place to live for a little while. Not a great yeah, place to be for a long time, but for a little while. Yeah. Like, yeah. Dirty Myrtle. I don't, yeah. I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. You get yourself Dirty in a little Myrtle. bit of trouble and like, yeah. you get out of town. And I don't like golfing. So like, if, and I don't like golfing. And I don't go in the – I know you guys probably hate that. And then I don't go in the water at the beach. I like the beach, but not the water. Hey, there, so hey like, me, me and Mark have never been similar – more similar than we are right now. Are well, you afraid of sharks? Or like, no what's golf, the deal, man? No, it's just boring to me. Like, there's not – I will go in. I'd rather be on a lake. I feel okay. Like doing, yeah, like on a boat on the lake versus the ocean. You better so have you like a tube boats, or a wakeboard. Tube. I'm not skilled enough for the wakeboard. Give me some tubing. But, which is great, but either or. If you're just on a boat. See, so Kevin, so here's where we're at. Kevin gave us four picks for his bachelor party. I'm a ladies out there, and let's see where you rank them. Okay. One, Kentucky Derby. Okay. Two, Phoenix Open, Waste Management. Three, all the boys get back together in Iowa City. Or four, we go to Chicago and rent a boat. The playpen. So the playpen is that I've been there before, but I've only been there to like hang out. Not can you actually like do water sports on it or no? Uh, no, that's just like where you go, like you see all the yachts anchored up. You just and... get boozed up and sunburned. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm cool without it. Yeah, so okay, I already know where Drake like goes in <laughs> all this, but no, I'd go. This 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 could actually have a whole lot of influence on my decision here, so I'm very yeah. interested. <laughs> Like the come on, Mark. Dude, the come on, Phoenix, Mark. There's one you're saying like the, the Phoenix Waste Management Open is a different thing. I thought it was just like a normal golf tournament. No, it's, just, no. it's not a golf, <laughs> a golf tournament. It's like it's Happy Gilmore. It's a frat. Re-incarnate. It's a frat party. On yeah, a it's golf crazy. Yeah. Um, for that like that time of year, there's nothing better. I'd say I'd say Waste Management there. Okay. Um. Then you go Kentucky Derby. Okay. okay. See, we put Kentucky Derby first, weights management second, okay. but at least you're in the right the yeah. right realm. That's the so way. That's, I not, that's also not my jam either. Like nice dressing up, nice. Um, like it would be awesome. It's a bucket list thing. But. To to go be a fake rich guy dirtbag yeah. at the Kentucky Derby and no just doubt. bet horses and go nuts with your degenerate friends. I mean, yeah. like for a bachelor party, that's definitely up there. No doubt, it's up there. Yeah, it's got it's definitely up there. And then 
I believe golf is part Chicago of that over too. Iowa. You can go to Iowa at any time. You'd rather go for a game, I feel like. Yeah, the idea behind that was like, hey, just get all the guys back together in Iowa City one last time. We just do what hey, we just live in Iowa City weekend like we would have in 2016. So we just you know, we go to Poncheros, you know, we, we rent Betton for a weekend. <laughs> that'd, be that'd, that'd be amazing. We go kick your door in again, you know. The uh so God, we, so Mark and neither Mark or I golf. We look like each other. That's what I'm saying now. But um, so back back to you, Matt. Yeah, so, so you, we were Myrtle. Up- so yeah, we're Myrtle and then was there so we the cool part I'll, I'll sidetrack slightly myrtle's weight room is the size of a hotel gym and that's being nice so it was Ooh, tiny time nice. okay so yeah so that's our home one so what we did is we and bought you're dealing with what like 27 fit. athletes oh and yeah we have 30 30 guys on the team 30 guys yeah. so yeah, everybody got a the- membership to the y or what so here's what happened no <laughs> we're, we're gonna go on what we did so Last year, what we had is um, a Beaver Fit trailer. So it had four racks on it, pop out, like set up four mats outside with it, had all the equipment you could ever want. That's the dream. Yeah, so it's pretty sick. I saw you with this thing. Yeah. So then, like, that was supposed to be home only. Like, they didn't really, like, think about bringing it on the road, even though it's on wheels. Mm -hmm. But so, yeah, so we ended up renting a truck every week from Enterprise. I have no idea what I'm doing with that big of a trailer. Like I've driven a U-Haul, but that's attached. This this is a different animal. <laughs> but like the closest thing would be when we interned and mm-hmm. we had the gator on the back. That's yeah. the closest thing I've done to a trailer. <laughs> so I figure the shit out, figure out what I need for it. We get it rolling. So yeah, we take that everywhere on the road. It's a huge advantage because usually you're stuck either going to a Y or you're stuck using the away team's gym the home team when you're away yeah, and they give it to you at like nine to 11 AM and the game's at 7 PM. And then the game doesn't end until 10 30, 10, 10 30 mm-hmm. guys don't go to bed till one, one third. They don't want to wake up then. But with the trailer, I'd be out there. I'd train in the morning. I'd be out there from like 9 AM until like 1230. Mark's in the fucking parking lot with That's every it. plate. In oh, the the city. Park, a parking lot of some stuff. Sketchy places. Augusta, and he's just, Georgia. And Augusta, and Mark's those just are dead, the best places to be, Mark. The sketchy Mark's just deadlifting 860 pounds. Got to do it, man. In the, in the parking but In Augusta, Georgia. Yeah, ain't nobody really fucking with the guy who's deadlifting much. 800 pounds. For real. You're probably safe in those sketchy areas. That's right. That's fair, yeah. There's some, there um, are some sketchy areas. So it's got to be yeah. like really tough to deal with. Like Obviously, like in football, you got one game a week, right? So yeah. it's pretty easy to like schedule out when you're going to have your lifts for a football program. Yeah. But like baseball is crazy because you're on the road all the time and you know, you're playing four or five games a week, right? Different animal. Yeah. Different animal. So there's six games a week. The way it was is you'd be home for a week, away for a week. You okay. Play Tuesday through Sunday, travel back Sunday to home. If you're on the road, if you're at home, you stay there, then mm-hmm. travel either Monday or Tuesday, depending on how far it is. Everywhere was driving distance. Okay. AAA is the only place that will fly. Every yeah. other, low A, high A, double A, all will drive. So, yeah, it's it's a different animal because you have your position players that play four to five times a week. No one mm-hmm. really plays all six. Then you'll have position players that only play one to three that are in a different category. Mm-hmm. Then you have starting pitchers that are on a strict schedule no matter what. Then right, you have right. relievers, and we try and make it where they're, hey, you're on a schedule. This is when you're going to lift. We'll make adjustments as needed, but we can't wait for you to throw because we don't know when you're going to throw. Yeah, makes so sense. It's a diff- yeah, it's a different animal. And then at every level, it gets harder. Like the lower the level, the longer they have in between games, the, the relievers. Mm-hmm. Um, and development comes first. So if, if a guy really needs to – gain weight, get stronger, we might sit him for two to three days so he can get two really good lifts in during that week. So Damn. we're lucky that the, the org here, they truly believe in what we do. So it's a good fit. And uh, no, but so like, yeah, so Myrtle was, so we have the trailer all that last year. They were, what What level was Myrtle? Low way. So that's like the first one after Arizona. So that's a young, young bucks. Is that the lowest of low? That's the lowest. So, so it goes Dominican. There's Dominican Academy. 
Uh-oh. Then Arizona League. So then there's the Arizona League. Those are the guys from the Dominican or new draft guys. Then you go low A, high A, double A, triple A. So it's a, it's a different animal. I know, like, it was different to me when I got here. It's, That's crazy. It's not football where, hey, the draft guys, you're on the team, right? You're mm-hmm. on the team. You're probably going to help that team because there's only 53 spots, 48 can dress. You're probably That's helping that six, I think. Yeah, so, yeah, so you're going to help the team, whether it's special teams, whatever. So many guys don't make it. Like, college football is minor leagues to a degree. Yeah, Sure. Compared to like the baseball system, yes. for sure. Baseball is even if you are a stud. We have a guy we just drafted. He was a third rounder out of Florida. Florida was in the national championship, right? Mm-hmm. Just as a stud, well, he's not touching the big leagues for a, a decent amount of time. Even though he was a junior in college, it blows my yeah, it blows it's my crazy. mind how these guys. I'm pretty sure. There was like a guy makes, that makes it even more crazy. Like what Trout was doing as like a 20 year old kid in the MLB, Insane. crazy, like absolutely insane. Because like 23 is like young to be make it to the big, really league. young. Yes. What would you say, Mark, is the average time between somebody getting drafted and if they make it to the big league? Like what is it? I'm three sure years? A, I'm sure there's a real number, but like for your studs, your first rounders. Two to three years is what you're hoping. That's wild. That's unless crazy. it's like, like the guy this year, Paul Skeens. He was the first round. He's yeah. the first pick overall from LSU. Like next year, he'll probably be there. Oh, really? Maybe not. Like something can happen. But like, he's pretty ready for that. But that's not norm. What's that's the? Norm. Um, why aren't they ready? What? Why is there such a big gap compared to football or ba- basketball guy yes. there's 17 year olds who go play the in the NBA stuff you're seeing so pitchers are going to be more ready because pitching is pitching right yeah but you also have to get out like there's a difference between getting swing and miss in college or high school versus in the pros these are the best of the best guys and these guys are in their prime still at 32 33 mm. while in football like you start to decline right basketball mm-hmm. most people start to decline but in baseball you could be in your prime for a while so yeah. there's a buildup of of talent where, yeah. and then yeah. that's a buildup in like that is a backtrack backlogs your minor leagues. If you right. have a bunch of studs that are really good, like Albert Pujols, Miguel Cabrera still playing. It's insane. Yeah, there's guys down the line of third baseman in the Cardinals organization who are like, "Hey, Albert, fucking retire, buddy." Yeah, it's crazy. I right? mean, it's probably just like um. You know, you've seen in college football the last couple of years with the COVID year. You know, you got a bunch of sixth year guys on the teams, and it, that's why you, you kind of get backlogged with like your sophomore and yeah, redshirt freshman classes. Yeah, you know, we just had these guys playing for the last four years on the field, exactly. uh, except to a much higher degree in the MLB. It's happening in basketball and volleyball too. Um, yeah. There's a bunch of teams who, in basketball, and volleyball, they get like nine scholarships or something like that. And so you have seniors who were like studs for some of these teams and they want to play another year, but they've already given the scholarships to the incoming freshmen and there's just not enough to go around. And so they transfer to another team and you're like, why is this absolute like ace for this volleyball team or this basketball team transferring? It's like they, they ran out of money. It's crazy. Got to, got to go somewhere else that has yeah. a open scholarly. Yeah. That's, how that's, much, um, how much turnover are you seeing like in your team? Just throughout the year, like guys getting moved up, moved down level. Oh, a ton. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, so how hard is that from like a strength perspective? Like you have new yeah. faces in your oh. facility. Like you don't – I imagine you have some conversations with like the strength guys and different levels of the orgs. Like, hey, where's this guy at? Where do we need to start? You have to. Program? So, yeah, so here's – so, okay. I'll, I'll go back to go forward here. Yep. So right. last year was in Myrtle. This year was going to be in Tennessee. One thing led to another – Someone left and then I got promoted. So I'm the minor league coordinator now. Okay. So I am, I have a boss who's the coordinator of like all strength, conditioning, and nutrition. He oversees major league down. But okay. like I oversee like triple A through the Dominican. So the, the guy above you, he's the actual Cub strength coach. No. So he is, so technically he lives in North Carolina. Like okay. his, that's his home base. He travels all around. And he's the the boss of the MLB. This isn't how every place works, though. So every every organization is different. But he's the boss of the two strength coaches in the big leagues. Okay. He's my boss. 
we have two like programming, like super smart guys that were private sector before this. He's their boss. And then he's technically like the people that are under me, like he's everyone's boss, but mm-hmm. they report to me so I can report to him. Gotcha. So in there, so it helps. So you guys oh, yeah. have, you guys are hired just to do programming? It's not just programming. They have other stuff. Okay. They do a bunch of other stuff, but like part of it is like, that's part of their job. Yeah. Is like trying to close the gap between like one of the guys is more on the position player side. The other one's more on the pitching side, mm. close the gap on like using our analytical data that we have in the weight room with the baseball analytical data, which is absolutely ridiculous. Baseball but analytical data is almost it's, endless. It's oh, these guys that have like, it's like outrageous. Stat- statistician degrees too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. We have everything. Yeah. Like there's, we have baseball sciences. Like we have like our department does our sports science, but we have baseball science where it's all about all right, how can we predict what this guy's going to do down the road? Like that's part of the drafting process too. So it's, it's insane. But when you go about like, Hey, how do we keep track of these guys? So all those coaches were here. They all come to Arizona in spring training. So we know, mm-hmm. we know each other. We know how we program. Um, we communicate all the time. So when a guy gets moved, so with everyone's wherever you start, whether you start in Arizona or any of the lower levels, we have like, everyone has a profile that's within their team, right? We have, we use a system called bridge right now. We're going to get away from that because it's not the best. It's like team builder. So it's like team builder, like the train heroic one for like the gen pop. So that's where all their programs are. So the, we don't, we're not using cards like we were at Iowa. Like not everyone's in the same place. Yeah. So everyone's on that. So their program's on that. So when they go from affiliate to affiliate, it's, they just seamlessly transition. Unless there's some equipment that's it's slightly different. Like you have to get creative on the road sometimes, but that's how we do all the transition. So everyone, we have a transfer sheet where it's like, Hey, this guy likes to do this. Doesn't like to do this. This is injury history. This is how he like reacts to certain coaching, like even to that detail. Damn. Because that'll be important. Like it's even more important than it was like at the college football level. Like the this guy's a pussy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like a lot of them are head cases, right? In football. Yeah, it's like a bunch of guys who are gonna run through a wall regardless. Yeah, it's like you gotta be you gotta know the guy, right? How is he gonna respond, react to certain situations, whether it's in the weight room or on the field, and you gotta have like this word gets thrown around in baseball a lot, but feel, but you, you have to have feel in this sport. You got to understand like what these guys are going through. Like this season is ridiculous. It's it's similar to football in a different way. I'd it's love to read lot. Mark's. I'd love to read your notes on, on guys. Like this guy cries when we deadlift this guy. Hey man, you gotta, Hey, I just sent out some on, uh, we just got our draft guys. Um, they were here for two weeks. We sent four out and a couple more probably go out to the Phillies, but like, they're like, but I'll put notes. I'll put certain notes like on there for like, hey, this is how this is what this guy likes to do, what he won't do. Um, There's how he reacts and, and, to certain things, and like what like the ways he'll try and get out of things if it's a certain guy or if it's a guy that's a hard ass, badass, like no issues there. Hold him back sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Yeah. What What's the um? What's the because it's developmental, right? Yeah. And then you know we often when we have these conversations it's more so in the football realm of things we're talking about like our teammates that we played with yeah uh we just talked to to tristan about how he was like he loves off-season training and him and one of his offensive line buddies were going nuts on the bench press the other day or something and we're like damn like that's a little unusual isn't isn't it tristan like isn't most of your guys's training kind of injury prevention don't get hurt kind of stuff but it sounds like for you guys with the developmental need, what what is it? What what do these guys need to develop in the weight room the most? Like, what is the focus for a lot of these guys? That depends, and that's that's why we do our testing battery. So, like our big test, we'll look at we look at a counter movement jump. We use force plates, um, not like we have like legit ones now, like not the ones from Switzerland that like was like the first ones that we had. Like we were the first ones that I would get them, but like. We're using Vald now. Vald is one of the big ones, like Vald and Hawk. You saying that little or like that big hardcore 
piece of metal yeah. that DeMarco had was cheap. That thing was that was no, that was not cheap. It was expensive, but but it was junk. It was the software was junk. Damn, um, they got like us the, on that one. Yeah. I know <laughs> that was expensive. Yeah, we would use Excel to like input all that data, which is a little ridiculous now. Like mm. so, like so we have. We have force plates that we'll test, like jumps on. Athletic trainers do like the internal, external rotation. Like all these guys are throwers, but like we'll yeah. do our jumps. Belt squat ISO, where you have a belt hooked under, hooked onto um, a piece of steel, more or less, underneath you, and then you try and drive through. Like you're trying to, you're in a quarter squat, 125 degrees, and you try and lift that off the ground basically and it's locked and trying to lift it off the ground you're not going we're just measuring force yeah right yeah so like we'll look at that we'll look at we run we have our sprinting that we do we have a 1080 here which is like the greatest thing super expensive too but it's it's basically a way better version of like running with sleds it measures speed right versus left asymmetries power like it's so we use all this is it is it like a treadmill type no, it's not a treadmill one. So like this is, it's basic, it's the same concept of like a run rocket or any of these things you've ever seen, but it's, it's, it's sophisticated. Okay. More like Techno Gym it's, makes one that they gave to George and it looks like a treadmill, but the track itself almost looks like a military, an army tank uh, tread. And, and that meant, yeah. And it'll I know what you're saying. So yours is in place. That's in place, yeah. correct? Yeah. This uh, isn't the treadmill place. is, but you, the, but the, yeah. The thing actually moves. Yeah, no, I got you. I've seen those. Yeah. Those are awesome. Yeah, those are sick. But yeah, so we do all these tests. And then, hey, now we are going to figure out what this guy needs. Some guys come in really strong, but they are not powerful. They have their slowest can be. Like, their change of direction is terrible, right? So, all right, this guy needs to focus more on this stuff, right? But when we get these young kids from the Dominican, the draft, when they're high school kids, or even some of the college kids, like these guys need to get strong. Yeah. Like it, there's no difference. They need to get fucking strong. <laughs> and like, that's, that's where like a lot of these baseball teams don't do it. Right. Mm-hmm. Some of these orgs we talk with, like, what are you guys doing? And they're doing basic, like auxi- everything's auxiliary. They are never pushing. For force. Yeah. Yeah. They're on the top yeah, method living- or what? Yeah, like they're living in the middle. Like they're just in the middle of like, hey, we're gonna do like sixty-five to like seventy-five percent forever, Ooh, and just hang out. That's a yeah, danger like, zone. Yeah, so it's it's they're not a lot of people aren't doing things like we're gonna get strong. Is that because they don't know? It, because I think they're it, scared to hurt, like pe- to hurt people. Yeah, yeah. But like, you should be scared that you're not gonna develop these guys into absolute studs and waste your yeah and waste your picks. Yeah, yeah. So no, we're going to like, we don't force anyone to do specifically anything, but you need to do a form of a squat. We're going to do a form of a pull and we'll, we'll get creative if we have to, if certain guys don't like certain things. Mm-hmm. We're going to put your face on a t-shirt and, uh, and just put a quote underneath your face that says you need to get fucking strong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it is, I guess. True. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be injury prevention yeah. and performance okay. enhancement. And like, there are stupid ways to do it. And there are smart ways to do it. Like if a guy has had chronic back issues, just like we did at Iwick, we had, we had programs for those guys that like they would either front squat cause they couldn't back squat. Mm-hmm. Or if they couldn't front squat, then we would hit split stance work. If they couldn't do that, we'd hit the pitch arc. There's always yeah, something. Yeah. There's something we can do and we can push for force. And like we need to, everyone needs to apply force into the ground. How are baseball guys not understanding that though? Like their well, idols do. growing up were built like they were well, in a laboratory. Right. These kids have to be thinking, I need to get an ass like Sammy Sosa had. Yeah. <laughs> but like, here's the crazy thing. No one wants to talk about that because it's like the asterisk era, right? Fuck the crazy you. Thing. That's the <laughs> best. Agreed. Agreed. I, I, I mean, is. You, 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 you can blame I know where steroids, Mark's going with this. They were no strong ass dudes and they were hitting a shit ton of home runs. That's it, yeah. right? Like and I bet they squatted. Yeah, here's the thing. It's like that is the greatest thing in the world for us. Is like look how fuck I don't care if they're on like they were on steroids, cool, like yeah. whatever. Right. You're not whatever. gonna get them as strong. Those strong, are like, strong motherfucking guys. Yeah, those are strong guys that are hitting bombs and everyone footers. Yeah, 
And everyone wants to see that, right? Yeah. So it's crazy to me that no one looks at that. It's like, oh, I want to be like that. Like you don't want to hit, you don't want to hit 40, 50, 60 home runs. Of course they do. Crazy. Can't relate. Like, <laughs> why do you not want to get strong? Yeah. It's it, it's hard, right? Like it's you go back to like it's not easy. It's, it's the basic principle that like you yeah. have to do work to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You have to you have to actually work really hard at it. And it's not just a skill because this is a little different. There's a lot more skill involved, mm -hmm. skill work involved. Like football, mm. you can't do a year round. Yeah. You'll die. Like in <laughs> baseball, like you do your sport pretty much year round. You throw a ball year round, you hit year round. It's not as intense in certain times, but right. you're saying you couldn't run the 23B year round. I'd, I'd fucking do it until I couldn't move, but yeah, but it would be fun. <laughs> Mark's the um, original man. What do you notice like uh, a big difference, like between football players and baseball players, like when you're working with them, like obviously you still have athletes training at a high level um, yeah. and competing and, you know, obviously trying to make it to the next level. Uh, but just like overall, like, do you see any major differences between working with, with, between the two sports? Yeah, th there's huge differences in the fact that like football is a body weight sport, as in you, unless you're outside the box, right? And even then you still need to have mass on you. But yeah. if you're outside the box, you can get away with being just a freak of an athlete and have mm -hmm. some muscle mass on you. But if you're anywhere inside the box, you are trying to move human beings for your job. Like in any part of your job, you're either trying to tackle someone, run through somebody, trying to block somebody and literally try and move them back you're trying to get off of blocks on defense and go get a quarterback like you're trying to move human beings and you have to be super explosive and powerful to do that the, these quarterbacks nowadays are, are 240 yeah they're huge and like some of them can a lot of them can run so body weight is huge and in baseball it's big too like the bigger and stronger you are typically the harder you're going to throw the harder you're going to hit the ball there's correlations there there's but fat guys in baseball too. Yeah, but it, it's a necessity in football. You have to have that. So training in the offseason is a huge thing. Like the training in the offseason is monstrous. That can make or break your career really quick. Perfect. In baseball, yeah. sometimes you can get away without it. You might not maximize your potential. Because you there's such little a little offseason as compared. Yeah. Because if you're wasting a football offseason, you're wasting nine months. You waste a baseball offseason, you're wasting – 10 weeks yeah but you also got you also got some big ass dudes like prince fielder with body comps in the 30s well, okay. so yeah so here's the thing is like you do have guys like that are somehow really good at this sport because of the skill they're skilled but, outliers yeah, yeah but they're they're exactly they're huge outliers and like but the injury risk is ridiculous with those oh, guys. sure yeah just like, the injury risk with either being super fat super strong and muscular though like too fast. So let's imagine like, all right, you're strong and powerful. You put on 20, 25 pounds of mass in one year in baseball. Awesome. Oh, yeah. But oh, if you yeah. do it too quick, how many times are you taking a swing or throwing a ball? That amount of force over and over again, if your body's not adapted to that, something's going to break. Especially mm -hmm. rotationally. That's what I'm saying. So like a football player's spine, like it needs to be fucking thick and strong there. Right, Concrete. baseball player. We'll put that on the back of the shirt. That's it, baby, right there. And then, a, but a baseball player, like they, you have to have rotation. Like you have to be able to move from the middle with your pelvis. So, like that's another big one. Like I would, I would train quarterbacks more like I we train some of our guys here mm -hmm. right now to a degree. Like the quarterbacks definitely shouldn't be doing some of the stuff like we all were doing, just based on the rotational aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, it would tighten them up too much. Yeah, like it's. It, exactly. Like you're not like you're not allowing them to use that pelvis the way it should be able to. We we would always him. be doing different shit. He would always go in there and do his own. I remember he was watching. Different, yeah. He was a different cat. I love yeah. Uyghurs. Oh, he's a uh, he's unbelievable. That's yeah. Doctor Uyghurs now. Yeah, that he's is, uh, he was he was doing he was coaching quarterbacks at the at a place in Illinois with right, Yeah, yeah, and and he does doing a lot of jujitsu. Yeah. We are a cool dude. We got to have him on the podcast. We did. We did. Yeah. We got to have him again. True. Um, that's, that's, man, that's, it seems like you have so much to consider. There's so much consideration for these guys. So much. 
There's so Mark's kind of convinced me that training uh, baseball players is a little bit like training football players. Dude, You're training just trying is to train training power. Is training, man. Yeah, you got to be strong. Like, and any sport, basketball, you got to be strong. But like, you have to make the adjustments for your athlete. Like, but they basketball, you can get away athletes. with being yeah. basketball. You can get away with being twitchy and springy. Yeah, but then you, you, need, you do need some muscle, muscle like LeBron injury. and the boys. Yeah. It always comes back to injury because if you have more yeah. muscle, you're more physically prepared. Your, yeah. your skeletal system is better equipped. Like, and it just, yeah. Look at LeBron, the way he takes care of his body. And I am the farthest thing from a LeBron fan. I do not like LeBron. But, but, as he, a takes care of his body. but he takes care of his body. Yeah. And he's been able to play at a high level for his whole career, yeah. which is crazy. It is. Um, yeah, you grew up a Chicago kid. I mean, you can't be a LeBron fan. That's well, blasphemy he's, he's to a cries, kid Yeah, it is, but he also cries like a little baby. So, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can't have that stuff. Yeah. And, what is now, um? You uh, being in Chicago, you were a Sox fan growing up, right? So okay, weird, weird situation. Whole family's Cub fans. Grew up young age Cub fan. Okay, I don't know why. I'm just like a little prick it's of a 2005. Kid. No, before that, oh, this is like oh okay. one. So the Cubs were good before the Sox were in like 03, right? Wasn't that the yeah. Bartman year? Yeah, they because they went to the uh, NLCS. Yeah, no, the Bartman year. The Bartman year. Yeah, so I was – 2002 but, or 2003, I think. Yeah, so, but yeah. I changed like 01 just because I was being a little prick of a kid and just wanted to be different. You just wanted to go against your family? family? Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah. So, you know, like, I'm, big time, I'm yeah. definitely big time Chicago, like, always in general. Like mm. you still want the, the city to do well with that, but but no, it's like, like the feel. Like do you have you been to both? Oh yeah, Wrigley Sox, and yeah. Uh, Sox Park. Yeah, like the experience at Wrigley is much better because of how you can get there. Yeah, along the lines. Plus, well, like the area around it's a lot cooler. Like exactly. you're not gonna get stabbed. Especially now they have built it up a little bit yeah. more. So. Yeah, if you if you walk like three blocks away from um, Guaranteed Rate Field, you're in a bad area. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> when Lauren uh, when Lauren did her last semester of college, student teaching there, her school was like right by the White Sox Stadium, mm-hmm. and it was like she used to talk about all the time. She's like, "All right, I'm on the one block that I need to walk to the train, <laughs> where so just like check my location because this is the bad block." <laughs> yeah. Um. What, is, what were uh, you gonna do though? You were were you just gonna call nine one one or what's? Yeah, I was just gonna be the the intercom guy. Like, hey, uh, sir, someone just took my uh, my fiance. <laughs> Taken. We've got a we got a five six female that is being uh, assaulted right yeah, now. She's currently on she's in the south side or yeah south side of Chicago somewhere. I don't know where she is. Um, what is it? What does a week look like then? How many how many lifts do these guys get? So we we're talking different for average different people. So okay, so no, so I'm gonna give you. Starting pitchers are going to go two real lifts, a movement session, which is a good, feel good day, no. get the body moving in a good way, and then a primer day. A primer day is usually the day before. Some guys like that day of. No. That's similar. Like, get think about what we used to do on fast Fridays. Fast. Yep. Yeah, like on fast Fridays, like that day. Similar to that type of stuff. Not obviously, we're not snap, we're not snatching with the guys, but similar type of day to that. Just, so two just real lifts, throwing it back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just drilling a rotator cuff. That's right. But yeah, it's so we got so that's what they're on. Um relievers two to three days lifting. Same with position players. Relievers, position players are similar. What we have kind of moved to in season work is we'd love for them to get four to five micro dose lifts. So one of the days might be a squat paired with a jump, and that's your only thing you do. And then the next day, you'll hit your auxiliaries. Okay. So you're micro, you're in the weight room for 20 to 20 to 30 minutes a day. Okay. You're, you, if you say the word microdosing anymore, Drake's going to get a bump. Yeah, Drake, Drake went <laughs> in the gym. Right Might go get a mushroom. I don't know. Mark's <laughs> talking me into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, that's where we like to do with those guys if they're willing. Um, especially at Okay. Home. Oh, hold on. You keep saying what guys won't do if they're willing. They're How professionals, much? man. So here's the thing. Like they're going to do the work, they will, but it's it's a two way street. Yeah. So it, the less we have to force people to do things, it, the, the better, better we're gonna be. Yeah. The more they buy in, the the best program is the one that someone's going to actually somewhat enjoy and willing and to be wanting to do. Yep, I know. So I just find that crazy. Just coming back from like 
our experience at I Iowa know. football. Yeah, that, that's yeah, where I'm coming from. It's like, it's this a is different what you're doing. <laughs> Can you imagine walking into the weight room and looking at Doyle and going, hey, you know what, Chris? I'm not I'm, feeling the 85 for five today. I'm out on the hang cleans today, buddy. Well, you know? So, like, if there's a certain thing programmed, like, they're probably doing it. But in yeah. season, having said that, in season, if you have some, if you were banged up, your program would get adjusted. Yeah. yeah. Right. Sure. So in season's different now. Off yeah. season, do you get these guys in the off season, season or no? So we have off season camps here. Okay. So where the camps start, like the end of the season will be from September 10th to like the 20th, somewhere in that range, depending on playoffs for the minor leagues, if you make right. it. Mm-hmm. But then after that, some guys will come back for instructs. Those are your younger guys that need more work, need more at bats, need more innings thrown. Then there'll be a strength camp until Thanksgiving that they'll be a part of. And then this year there's a true dead period because they are unionized, the minor leagues. So it's dead until January like 2nd okay. where they're all home basically. Then January 2nd until basically spring training, we'll have another camp. You have to be invited to those camps. So like the higher prospects will be invited. They don't have to go. As long as they're doing their work, if they can be trusted to do their work, then like we allow them to do what they want. They can do what they want regardless, but they're not voluntold to do. I want to. And this I would just, like to sign up for like practice or OTAs like the NFL has. This is just strength training. No, the, the OTAs would be your spring training. Like that's gotcha. like that's the important things. There's no true OTAs. Gotcha. But these guys are paid to come here to train, and then they get to live in Arizona. You get to live in Arizona. Yeah, you live in Arizona in the winter. Yeah. It's like a pretty pretty good deal for them. You're so, what level are you now? So what level am AAA I? AAA all the way down. So yeah, so I'm the coordinator. So what I do, okay. my big thing, I'm based in Arizona. Um, I'm here most days, but I will travel. Like in the first half, I I was gone for like three and a half weeks at a time. Okay. Where what I would to- go to all the affiliates, three to four days, make sure everything's going right there. If I have to cover for somebody, if they have like a wedding or something, like we give them a couple of days, they can go during the season. I'll cover. So do you, um, are you, so you're not with any specific team. Day no, specific team. Yeah. no specific team. So like if I'm in Arizona, like the ACL game is here. That's the Arizona complex league. Mm. That's here uh, now at night, just because of how hot it is. But then you have four minor league games plus the Cubs pretty much every day. Yeah. So there are five games. And I usually have like an, I I've like, I'll throw it on like four iPads or like one on a computer and like watch the minor league games while I'm doing work. That's so much baseball. Like, there's so much stuff going on. Like it's ridiculous how much baseball is going on. Like, is it great baseball depending on the level? But it doesn't matter because I'm. It's more about what the guys are doing. Right. You yeah. Keep eyes on you guys. Right. Yeah. So you, just, just between a couple of friends, you got you got some wagers out of these games, right? You can't be watching minor league baseball it. without no. the action. You can't do it. Like that's like if of, like of all things. Like that's the thing you cannot do. <laughs> you just got Mark fired. I um, know, that's why I said it. I mean, do you, can you? Is there even lines out there for the minor league games? Are they? I don't think there. There's no way. There's no I way. Don't, I don't think there's any books. You could find a bookie. Any, you could probably find a bookie in the alley. Mark, the there's. Outside. Yeah, I bet you could. Drake will be at your bookie if you yeah. want. Um, what house? Uh, there is a wide range from those like lower A to triple A salaries yeah so it's it's dependent on what you sign for for those guys right yeah like it it is but like you're not getting paid all that well you're not getting paid poorly because you're getting your living is paid for okay but like and it's getting better now but like if you're just in triple a on a triple a contract you're not making all that much money still okay it's not nothing but it's still under six figures is what i'm saying Mm -hmm. for that really yeah so, wow. but that's not, but here's the, here's the thing. If you're on the 40 man, which is you're protected by the major league team. Yeah. Now you'll make more money there. Of course. And it's what your signing bonus is. Like our first rounder this year signed for like four mil. Right. Ugh. So he'll be in, he'll be in the minor leagues getting paid minor league salary, but he got his, he already has his. Yeah. Game yeah. yeah. He's got his little. Do you notice um, between those top guys and those bottom guys, a different vibe with their I, I throw I, I kind of lump training in with their everything off the field work right like you know the, the sauna ice bath recovery tools all this different shit that there is nowadays is there did those guys 
take more of an interest because they have more uh, like resource behind them to really work on their bodies as so, opposed to like the lower a guys who are like yeah just let me lift and then like get me a foam roller and that's all i need so off season depends like obviously where you're at like if you're from venezuela if you're from the dominican like and you go back home i hope you have a weight room like I, I'm, that's my hope is that you have a weight room and you can do the training that we have we want those guys to stay here with us they gotta squat yeah. their friends yeah like it's like I've been down to the Dominicans. Like it's different down there. Some places are nicer than others, but like it's a different animal. I heard that's a fun place to go watch a baseball game, though. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> no, no <laughs> hey, doubt. Them guys can swing it now. Yeah, and they have lines on those games. I can promise you, <laughs> <Guaranteed>. <laughs> There's definitely lines on those games, Drake. No doubt. And every single one of them came to the game with that slip from uh, from bench warmers that says "I am 12." Yeah, that's right. But no, like with the. With the, <laughs> How we got yeah, he's like, fuck, I'm yeah. so fucked. Well, I can't remember what I was talking about. But no, the supplements, like, there's enough at the affiliates. Like, we, we give them all the supplements that they would need. Yeah. All vitamins, like the basics of basics that they, like, every person. No way it can be as good as we had in Iowa, though. So it's different, right? Because Iowa was not giving you true supplements. Right. We're giving them, like, true multis, vitamin D, omegas. Like we'll have creatine like we'll take we have pre-workouts that are all nsf c4 hydration stuff. like colleges aren't allowed to give you that stuff they can as long as we it's all ties and vitamin d and stuff you know you had so you had a good amount of it but like it's you can be given probiotics like it's a little as long as it's nsf we can give it to them pro hormones yeah like yeah, yeah. nsf <laughs> pro hormones. but like it's like the food situation is not the same uh-huh. way different obviously a million times better at in college big leagues different story that's best of the best big leagues get what they want like they'll have cold cold brew on tap kombucha on tap athletic greens they have like Their the sleep pods yeah they got everything like the big leagues like it's it's big like like the term big league is for a reason d-ball needles when they want them <laughs> um Gosh, it, it would be so sick. And ba- baseball would be so much cooler if there was just nine Mark McGuire's running out on the field yeah. every day. There needs to be like stronger guys, at least. Yeah. Um, fuck, that's no awesome. more roids, but uh, Mark Wiseman's going to get them big and strong. Get them big and strong, man. Right What's up? Uh, so, like, you're obviously dealing with a lot of guys coming in and coming out, whether they're being traded between organizations oh, yeah. or sent up and down to different levels. How do you manage like a team culture or like a culture in the weight room with so that going the on. The whole thing with that is it's an organizational culture, right? Uh-huh. Because there's no, like every affiliate will have their own flavor of culture of like how things are handled to a degree and like the vibes that are there. Mm-hmm. Some are better than others. And that's based on the staff and the players that are there. Um, so it, but it's about development. So like, that's the big thing is like, Hey, a guy's doing really well who might've been, your leader source, quote unquote. Right. Well, that guy's probably not going to be there in a month. That long. Yeah. Yeah. He's doing really well, which is what we want. We want right. those guys moving. So it's an organizational culture of like standards and expectations that we have around you. That's, that's where it starts. And then there's development. It's like at certain levels, the higher you get, the actual outcomes are more important. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Yeah. So, like, hey, a guy's getting on base. Average is really good. He doesn't hit the ball all that hard. Think of like a Nick Madrigal, right? Yeah. He doesn't mm-hmm. hit the ball, but he gets on base. Like he's he's a big leaguer right now. He is. Right. He's actually yeah. in a big league. So doesn't strike out that often. Yeah. Yeah. But at a lower level, if you're doing that, but you're not hitting the ball that hard, you're not probably going to be as valued as high. Right. If you're hitting the ball, like exit velocity is like elite of the elite is like 110, 111, like is elite of the elite guys. Like that's your Giancarlo saying. So like that that's the hard like the guys that that hit the hardest hit balls are like one seventeen one twenty ish. Yeah. Like I, I saw a clip of Shohei the other day. Fuck well, Shohei. Yeah, Shohei. He the, laced one, and I thought that it took the 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 seams off of it. Oh yeah. my he, god! He's the greatest he's baseball down. player to ever grace the field. There's no doubt. There's he's, no doubt. He's hitting as well as anybody in the MLB in the hardest era to hit of all time. Pitchers are by yeah. far the best they've ever been. And he's pitching and he's at a Cy Young, Cy Young level. Yeah. Like, Crazy. He's you know the best he, ever. Yeah. Do you know what he does? He trains really steroids. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, he no literally steroids. lives, breathes, he trains really lazy. fucking hard. 
and he takes care of his body. Yeah. But he's yeah, a like, big he's a big guy too. Oh yeah. Huge, huge, huge guy. But yeah, we we preach all that's like the recovery stuff with everything with these guys to be able to do that. Like that's part of the culture here. Mm -hmm. Is like we we preach sleep. Like the advantage you can gain with sleep is insane. You're playing six out of seven days. You're on the road half the time. Hey, what are we going to do? Hey, all right, blue light blockers. We're not going to give them to you, but like, hey, this is what we recommend. Sleep masks for the hotels because there's going to be lights all over these comfort inns. Yep. The suites that they're staying in. So like, what can we do? All right, magnesium, zinc to help promote sleep. Yep. Hey, we're going to educate you about alcohol. We're going to educate you about caffeine. When is it too late to have caffeine where it's going to affect your sleep, whether you know it or not? So we're going to do all this stuff with the guys. And this is where we hope we're gaining an advantage on every other team. You definitely are. Sleep's so important, dude. Yeah. It's number one. It's unbelievable. It's the number one. I fucked up so bad freshman year in Iowa City. God damn it. Yeah, but like, you have so to you learn. Guys, uh, your guys' biggest factor is like of we're doing things right in our program is like exit velocity. That's like your – your. So like for pitch, so pitchers is going to be – you have two things, right? Mm. This is dumbing it down to the dumbest of dumb. But like you have two things. You have velocity and stuff, which go hand in hand. And yeah, command. stuff. And command, right? Yeah, right? Those are your things that you're going to look at with pitchers. Position players, we're going to look at for like hitting itself. You're going to look at your strikeout percentage, your walk percentage. You're going to look at your exit velocities. And then so like you'll look at average OPS. Um, but then you're also going to look at this. It's WOBA and ex-WOBA. And like what that takes into account is how hard you're hitting the ball to at what launch, at what angles. Okay, if you yeah. hit the ball 105 into the ground. That's not the same as hitting it 105 at eight, 17 degrees where it's a double in the gap. Right. So it takes all that into account. We, in the major leagues, they have stack cast, so they get um, speeds during games. We use catapult GPS, so we yep. use that in the minor leagues with all mm -hmm. of our guys. So we're measuring speeds of them, accelerations, decelerations, what they can reach in a game. So like we take all this into account with all these guys, fielding percentages, like that's what's being looked at. And But, but from your guys' standpoint as a strength staff, all you can really influence is – you can't really influence – how many guys walking or not, but you can influence how hard he's hitting the ball, or how fast he's moving. That's right? what we're looking at, right? Yeah. Correct. We're looking at how hard the guy hits it, his bat speed, his linear mm -hmm. bat speed, and how hard he's hitting the ball. That's what we can directly affect. Yeah, and it, you can, it, there's a there's a correlation, huge correlation between exit strong, velocity right? and strength and power. So like you is. you see the guys who are like putting up like good weights in the weight room, those guys are swinging the bat harder, huh? They're swinging the bat harder. Like the issue might be that they can't make contact and their bat right. to ball skills. But that, that's the coach's problem. That's not much. It's a coach or like a, a, a drafting issue or like trading. Yeah, it might yeah, just exactly. be along those lines. Or it's a guy we took a chance on because we knew he's got donkey pop and we're not sure. Yeah, we're not sure. If he hit the ball, he's got donkey, <laughs> donkey pop, dude. <laughs> Fuck. That's, that's another key. Uh, but I mean, in theory, Exit velocity is directly correlated to angular velocity, which is directly correlated to linear velocity, which is directly correlated to power output. I mean, it just yeah. goes right down the line. No, it is. It, and it's, it's and they, they all know it. And they, they understand what they need to do. Some are just unwilling to do it consistently. Like with these guys, like the, the slight edge is the number one thing. It's like you have the line, right? You can go up or you're going to go down. Like, especially in baseball, the consistency of it, it's going to be, you're going to get to the all-star break and the separation is going to be ridiculous for the guys that have been doing the right stuff versus the guys that have not. Yep. It is. Do you guys do anything for conditioning? Yeah. Oh, totally. So position players, the only thing we're looking at, like they're, they need no conditioning. So a, day, a normal day, I'll give her, give a quick, easy, normal day, home game, show up to the yard, probably one o'clock might get your training in then early cage work around then maybe you have early fielding work before stretch you go stretch throwing program maybe you'll do some team fundamental but probably just bp back inside now you get your pre-game meal snack whatever it is go play the game that's your normal day so they're doing a ton of stuff they're not getting conditioned 
They don't need it. It's, like their volumes are ridiculous. It's zone two, zone one conditioning. Yeah, like they're everything. Yeah, yeah. Like their volumes are ridiculous. They get into the game. Now we're looking at: Are we touching top speeds? Do you do you have a step count on these guys? No yards though. They they have to move because of all that. Even if, though it's walking or trotting, it's yeah. got to. It's got. There's on their feet so much. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. So like it, it's a ridiculous amount along those lines. But now that's why we have player load. You have like the player load, which is taking the intensity of the cuts in all directions. You have high speed distance running. You have max velocity spring. Like that's what we're looking at in the catapult. So these guys don't need conditioning unless they are return to play guys coming off an injury. Pitchers we have on a, a certain conditioning plan based on if you're a starter, it's regimented. If you're a reliever, it's usually based around when you're throwing. How All many of these different, but how many of these how many of these guys, if you lined them up for eight sixty yard shuttles, would would make the times? Oh no. You don't train. <laughs> like, you don't train. Like, okay, okay. Some guys would just based out of pure athleticism. Like Couple, some of these yeah. guys are freaks yeah. and they would be able to do it, but they they'd be dead. Like it's not it's you you're good at what you train for, right? Yeah. For that. So like yeah, you know, it's they definitely like some of them, like I said, some of them would be elite at it but most some of them would a lot of them would get hurt because it's just not yeah like we will do like we'll do repeat sprints i'm not timing it yeah it's like hey like uh in the off season we have just a rsa repeat sprint we're looking at heart rates with okay. it so 20, 15 yards back and then you get you on the 30 seconds so let's say you do that in seven seconds you have 23 seconds do that six to eight times and the fat guys are at like 186 heart. <laughs> yeah, like some of the guys, like, yeah, something, but that's what we're looking at. Like, that's how we can measure, like, hey, shit. We can look at that test at any point and be, it's not that hard on them, like, actual intensity of it. Right. It's short. So we can look at that, like, hey, man, like, we've gone down a bad rabbit hole here. We're not living right outside. We're not doing the right things here. We need to get back on path. How many, uh, how many, 60 yard shuttles could Mark Weissman do right now before he missed it? I did um 12 yesterday, Stop probably it. at probably at like I'd probably at lineman pace though, like it was not like crazy fast. 13, skill, 13. Or skill, skill time or semi time? You just no, said I'm saying probably line time. Oh, line time. Okay. We're talking line time. Like, yeah, okay. this is post, this is like post workout, post training, get out in the sun. Yeah. It's like 95 degrees. Oh, it's probably a hundred at that time. It's a hundred, like 10 in the that's morning. That's tough, man. That's yeah. tough. How are you? Uh, how are you like in Arizona though? Arizona's amazing. Cause like, last time we talked, you moved back to Chicago cause you want to be back close to family, right? Close to the family. They realized that like, like I did like my part with that. I got like a ton of good family time in, okay, but nice. they, they realized like I need to be like, I can't be doing like the general population type stuff. It's not really for me. No, totally. Like all around. It's tough. You, you're, also, you're, you're a person that I just – I feel like you're going to be stuck around professional and high-level athletes for the rest of your life. I don't think, I you, can, I don't think you can live outside that world. Man. No, I, it's not for me. Like, I just don't have the patience for it. I think you're too competitive, right? Yeah. You don't want, yeah. Yeah, I don't have the patience for, like, people that hold, don't have standards, like, for themselves. Mm -hmm. And they, they might be – these people might be elite in – as a lawyer – in med sales as a fucking on wall street right hey, you're describing you my clientele right now man it's sometimes yeah. it's tough but they might they might not care about like the thing that i really fucking care about right exactly. they don't give a fuck yeah so like yeah it's like i definitely have to get better at like being a little more lenient with certain people just in general no. it's like i can't have the same standards as i do for myself but i still need high fucking standards for those yep. people so there's a the middle ground just being what, around highly motivated people all the time. Exactly. What uh? What does your training look like right now? It's more so like it's like pure phasic of like right now. I'm gonna get back into like more hiking. Like I, I when I was on the road as much, I wasn't hiking as much. So my training will probably be more surrounded around that. Like now I'll go I'll go earlier in the morning. The days since it's a six o'clock game here, and everywhere else is late. The days don't really start here until like 11, mm. but I'm still waking up early. Like, I don't know how not to. So I'm still waking up early. Like I'm going to get back now that I'm like here for a longer period, get back into the hiking, but I'm still, I will squat heavy once a week guaranteed. 
I will deadlift heavy at least once, probably twice, probably a straight bar, probably a trap bar in that week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I will do more. I'll bench, but like I don't enjoy it, but I'll just do it because I have to be strong still. Like I just – that mentally, like ego-wise, like, <laughs> I can't it, it, is, it is It is de- – meaning to yourself when you're like you're just not as strong as you used to be yeah so like i still need to do like bench yeah. but like i i will i care more about like doing like legit heavy pull-ups heavy dips like yeah. that type of like i care more about that i know it's right up Kluver's alley the is the body there. still feeling in decent shape yeah, like oh uh, we're great man like i'm sprinting yeah. at least four times a week i'll do sprints like different types like whether it's curves like the 1080 i'm talking about if you look it up it's like it's just measuring it's measuring your times for everything so it's still competing i'll jump on the force plates two times a week just i don't need to it's like i'm not test all i do is care like about like how do i measure up against myself yeah i don't really look at other people anymore unless yeah. like someone wants to challenge me then let's fucking go so, like, <laughs> <laughs> and they're gonna like, I don't care about, tell like, you I'm how that measuring. one's gonna go yeah they're i'm gonna not lose. measuring against athletes like that's not my thing it's not like yeah. I could do this. You should be able to do this. And I don't care. You could hit a ball way farther than I can. You can throw a ball way harder than I can. So what's the, uh, what's the total right now? Like if you, if we had to give you like a little uh, squat bench dead total, what what are you pulling right now? Dead? Like gun to head. I could still pull 675 right now without like, I don't train, I don't train straight bar nearly as much, but like you were were like in eight, in the eight hundreds though at one point, right? For straight bar. Yeah. Not 800. Like, my highest ever was 745. Only 745. No, I'm not, I didn't say only. Come on now. You at what, at what body up. weight? Like 226. That's stupid. That's just stupid. And then, but Fuck. no, so, like, if we're going dead, let's, let's go 675. We're going to go bench. Fuck, I don't go heavy, but, like, 315, I can still hit for a triple. So, let's say, like, 340. 340, I could probably get one time up. Okay. Not not a power lift 340. Not, 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 not the pause at the bottom. No, no pause. It's a fucking touch yeah, and go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're bouncing. And then we're going for squat. Yeah, like I try not to put concentrically going up. I usually don't have more than like 455 right now okay. on it, but I'll do eccentric hooks with it. I, I, I could probably hit a, a 550, 545 right now. Sheesh. I'm so, just saying, based on like how much I'm like bringing down, like other ways I've been training. So you, just, you're this still, is gun to head. This is gun to head. Like gun to head. You're still around 1600, which is pretty damn good. Yeah. This is gun to head. We're going like I can get this, like just warm up a little bit, and we'll get this rolling. Do you Are ever you uh, into, like the eccentric lifting where you're just lowering it and then? Uh... So like we have hooks. Yeah. So we'll have the eccentric rogue hooks where go down. Let's say I have 315 on the bar squatting. Yeah. I might have. 565 total based on the sides what's on the sides down uh-huh. and then i'll hit the 315 for like five to eight okay so i'll do hitting a super slow eccentric overloaded eccentric mm. or hand assisted right so yeah. if i'm going hand assisted your hat fields i'll go down not using the hands come up drive through with the hands i like it so i do it a decent amount now like i'm still all in like on the stimulus i'm just smarter about it unless i'm going to train for a competition but I still want to touch those kinds of weights. Yeah, I'll just do it in a better way. Are you still doing the uh, rear foot elevateds with the uh, the safety squat bar? Just so uh, no rear foot elevated now. Like the I've looked into a bunch of stuff because I had a little SI issues with it. I don't okay. go heavy RFEs anymore, but I am going split squats. Okay, so just and not elevated up. De- Demarco loves those too. Yeah, Demarco's big on that. I gotta still talk to Nick. A good amount so not as much as we used to i was just gonna ask if you guys still text yeah, i text him all the time because yeah. of the crossfit stuff oh yeah we'll be um, we still talking like i visited him last year at elon and stayed with him and the fam what a family they oh, race yeah. upstairs they're legends they're oh, really? at time. <laughs> yeah they're the most legends the best he's the best he, he's living the all-american dream oh, he, the best family well yeah, um, we did a crossfit when i went there a workout i hadn't done one for a while i was so fucking dead but then he probably iced you yeah, and then – yeah, basically. And then we did – we hit a clean from the floor, so a power clean from the floor. We were just like going – like it was like a five, five, three, three, one until you couldn't, right? Yep, yep. And like I couldn't tell you the last time I'd done more than like 225. Yeah. And I think I hit like 315 or 335. Like 
just because I was warm. I feel like yeah, yeah. like yeah. my I don't ever get warm. My body, like I don't you, I don't warm up totally anymore. It's like I feel that after I'm done with my training is when I'm probably the warmest. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I have to. My warm up now is is like 25 minutes. I, I you're doing technical stuff more or less. Like I'm warm. Don't get me wrong. It's just like I'm warm for the movement that I'm like training for. Yep. Makes um. Sense. Is G Bone in here? No, G- he's not. He's not here tonight. Um, so G Bones are still strap up the the pads and the helmet and play a few more games if you had to. Did you just hear one me game. deadlift seven hundred? We're going. Dude. Hey, we're going one game. One game. I got you one can, game before. You can do it for one, huh? Yeah, we got one. Mark, if you ever all passed you out, need to do is get an iron. Dude, dude, like, I don't. Did we? I don't know if we talked about this last time, but like, I actually put pads on because miles fucked up his neck and like he had to like practice tackling. So like I actually had pads on and like, he was like, I think we did talk about this. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. The most ridiculous thing. <laughs> like that was the whole like Trent Richardson thing. Right. Wasn't yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you Mark, do you realize, or like, do you, uh, are, are you aware that you're like different than other people? Oh, fuck. Yeah. I know I am, man. Okay. Like, and it's not like it's and like, I'd be, it'd be anti humble to say like, then I wasn't right. I know I am. I know I am. And I know I'm different. I'm crazy in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, and I'm cool with that. And that's where I text. Like, that's when I say like, I can't hold people to cert- the same standard. Cause I know what I do is fucking crazy. Like taping my mouth shut when I sleep is fucking crazy to a degree. Yes. And like do doing some of the stuff I do is yeah, it's fucking crazy. Getting in cold. Like right in the morning for like three minutes to the neck, like an ice cold. Well, yeah, it's it's crazy shit, but that's who I'm gonna be forever. If I'm not, just go fuck. You can you can come and kill me. It's okay. <laughs> Drake, you're close. You can come find me, Drake. But yeah, like if I'm not that guy, and if I'm not living that like standard for myself, yeah, it's all. It's like it, it is. Like it's not for. It's not a show for anyone else. Yeah. No one's watching. I no one's really watching when you were even playing. But like no one's watching now. Oh yeah, no. Um, he really fucked up for me to kill Mark, dude. He handed me down <laughs> half a legacy. Got to wear his number, play his head. old position. <laughs> you can't do um, that. I look at you as uh, I, I'm not on on your level, but relative to the average Joe walking the streets, I see and Kevin and Drake as well. Like, yeah. the, and a lot of guys that we played with, I see us on this level of like discipline and um ex- extreme in some stuff especially when it comes to athletics uh yeah. training um i don't know what you want to call it health stuff and i just like man you're just like when i listen this is the the best hour that i've had and i just miss fucking guys like you like i being around guys like you is just like i i don't get that in my normal life and i just I just I, I sometimes I wish like how could I make other people think like me, but I don't think it works that way. No, unfortunately, you're, it you're trying. You tweet a lot, but yeah. I know you it, also it, make it, Instagram posts about challenging yourself on vacation because you're that guy. <laughs> and that that's what I'm talking about. Like I am that guy. I'm I'm that I am Mark, but the one I'm the guy who tells people that I'm Mark. Mark just yeah. doesn't tell anybody. He's just like <laughs> I'm different, and yeah. I know it. I. Yeah, it's, 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 you always want that challenge. And like, even like, if Drake, if you've been like on some of these, like, like some of these people, like you look at them, like they can't like where the shit, like this person's behind you and they're coming up on you. This little guy, like wearing like moccasins. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? There's no way this guy's passing me now. And now I'm busting ass. And like, maybe he passes me, maybe he doesn't, but like, he's not working as hard as I am right now. But like in my mind, I'm like, I can't let this happen. No one, same. You, can't, you can't pass me. And we if the you same do, mind. like good for you, but like you can't pass me going up on these things. Like there's a challenge to like, I, I can't tell you that like I hike because I really, really enjoy nature. That'd be cool if I did. I don't. I enjoy the fucking grind of a hike and mm-hmm. getting on top of the mountain. And then you get up there and then you go right back down. <laughs> <laughs> I was at, so what Drake was referencing is I was at, I was like at, Lake of the Ozarks last week, and I put up a 
post of me working out, right? Yeah. And like those same things go through my head. And I and then I observe myself from the outside and I'm like, dude, you're a fucking weirdo. But in my head when I'm working out at the lake on vacation, the thoughts that are going through my head are there's not a motherfucker at this lake that's getting it in like me right now. Yeah. Like and I I just well, it's, relate. It's the switch, right? It's the dark. It's the dark place. It's that switch. Yeah. And we all have it. Drake sometimes can't turn it off. It's never <laughs> no, it's never off. No, that's what I'm saying. But like, but like sometimes, like some guys need that switch. That like, hey, it's time to practice. It's game time. Switch is fucking on. Right. Kevin had that. And you on are a badass. Sure. Like you what need that? that switch. Kevin, or you I've just said, need to be a crazy person. Kevin oh, yeah. had it on game days for sure. Big yeah. time. Big time. You Mark, have, have you ever hiked Thompson Peak? No, which one's that? It's up in Flagstaff. It's the no, highest. I haven't gone to Arizona. Flagstaff. Yeah. Let me go there. I I hesitate to say this because I genuinely do not want to, but let's do that hike sometime. <laughs> yeah. Because it is one of the I almost died on the mountain, first of all. Love that. Uh, like actual died because yeah. My girlfriend parked in the wrong parking lot. We ended up doing more than double the hike we thought we were going to. <laughs> I was on a 24-hour fast. We had a gallon of water between us, and we were out in the uh, out in the elements for over eight hours. Yeah. Up at 13,000 feet, shit gets so difficult. Oh, yeah. No, I'm in. You come on now. You know I'm already in. Just I know tell you're me in. When, tell me when and we go. All right. We'll have no, to figure that it, out. Though, it's going to suck but, bad. But Oh, yeah. Do you – um? Before we take up any more of your time and we kind of close yeah. this thing down, what is this what you see yourself do? Like now that you're into it, because you kind of got into this, like, ah, if I don't like it, I'll just do yeah. something else, right? Where do you see yourself in this career now? Like, is it something that you're interested in doing for the next two decades or? Yeah, like it's, you know what I'm really interested in doing? I'm really interested in getting the best out of these young men or men, guys getting them to achieve their best and be elite at what they do and like being a small, small, small piece of that and helping them get there and whatever I can do that in. So like you, that, that can be in baseball, could be in football, could be in rugby, could be in basketball. It doesn't matter where, like I found that out, like going to this now, mm. I was going to like wherever I went. Cause the, like wherever you go, whatever mindset you go in, in with as long as it's what you want to do and that's working with elite people it doesn't have to just be athletes elite people well i'm gonna be happy that in that sense so like th that's what i'm gonna do so i don't know is it gonna be with the cubs organization is it gonna be with a different baseball one is it gonna be back in college i don't know i really have no idea that's not part of the plan i have no anchors right now it's a that's a negative connotation word but i have no anchors still so like I'm still like free free solo where I can go wherever whenever. Just as long as you're around people trying to be their best, huh? Yeah, they need it. Like they want to be their best, and like as long as they're willing to help me allow them to be their best, then I'm all in. And there has if to you be uh, if, if the Cubs win the series, do you get a ring? I don't know. It's a good. You got question. to, bro. You have to. It's a good. You probably get like a a less version, lesser version of one, right? Like yeah. the strength coaches there probably do. Like the big league, the two big league ones probably do. We probably get like a lesser. We probably get something, but probably a lesser version of it. Like not as many diamonds or whatever it might be. All right. Well, you know, I'm a lifelong Sox yeah. fan, but you know, if the Cubs are around there and Mark getting a ring, I guess I could. Right. Unless it's against the Sox, I get it. But like here, that's why I tell well, Sox people. are selling like, off the team, man. No, we we forfeited this year. This is what I tell people, like, and to fuck with them, like it's White Sox fans that I have friends. I'll be like, hey, man, when you root against the Cubs, you're rooting for me to lose my job. <laughs> you want me to lose my job and I get into them, they get a little scared. It's good. Mark yeah, starts you, yelling at you, you piss your pants. Yeah, I was gonna say, any, you get into anybody and they're gonna be scared. And that's the switch that matters, right? Like, I can be like, you're everybody's I'm best friend. I'm most going to get time. along with you as long as I can. And like, but when that time comes, like, and there probably will be a time with a lot of these athletes, like, where I need to get on them. And I'm not gonna embarrass them in front of their 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 peers, but like, there's a time to get on them and it's meaningful if I'm not the train, right? Where I'm not yapping, yapping, yapping at them all the time, right. yelling at them. And then when it does, like that's that's the whole KF thing, 
right? KF will never be the train because when he starts motherfucking you, it's real deal. It's so yeah. terrifying. Yeah, it's real deal. Yeah, it was scary even from like the specialist on the sideline perspective. Yeah. It's like you what, fucked uh, up. It's so bad. What's the best book you read in the last year? You know, you're a big reader. Ooh, best book in the last year. It's a good one. Um, Think again, Adam Grant. Okay, I've heard good things. That's Think like about, really good. It's I think like he had a TED talk, didn't he? Yeah, he definitely did. So he's had multiple books. I don't know what the TED. It may have been on Think Again too, but so Think Again, like basic, the basic, the basis of it is that like you, we all need to rethink our strongest beliefs. Like, do you, yeah, do we see? Yeah, like, are those beliefs still backed by like reason and research? And like the newest information. And if facts they're and not, logic, right. Exactly. Yeah, like if they're not like, something you thought you learned when you were 12 years old and yeah, yeah, exactly. Or like if if I thought the same way I did when I was 24, 26, 28, like as I am now, I wouldn't be where I am. Like I learn and I don't I don't ever hold anything so strong except values. Values do not change to me. Mm. You can add values, or maybe you could make some more important, but like the values is that one, those, those things that like, I will keep forever, but everything else is up for grabs. Like you need, there needs to be reason behind it and like research if it's anything, strength and conditioning, but like, I'm not too proud to say, Hey, I used to have really strong beliefs about that. I'm not sure I believe that anymore because then that's the whole thing of that's the way we've always done it. And that's the biggest sin in life. Strong so don't beliefs. be a closed mind individual is what it yeah. is. Yeah. There's yeah. a great quote out there. It's like, uh, I don't know if it's from the book or not, but um, it was like, do you want to be right? Or do you want to see the world as it actually is? Yeah. Strong beliefs loosely held. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. That's great. That's, yeah. that's money right that's there. That's a good one. I'm going to have to put that on my list though. No, it is. And it's like, that can go for so many things. Like, look what's going on right now in the Big Ten. Like, it's crazy. Like, with these coaches. We talked about it, man. Yeah, it's like, I'm not, we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. But it's like, it's also the fact that. But fuck those guys if we're just going to put it out there. Well, like, there's there's one of them. Like, they, the whole Northwestern thing, I don't know enough. I don't have a, a strong enough belief. I have cer- I hate the way it was handled. That's the way I hate. But Supposedly whatever. it was just fat, weird guys doing fat, weird guy shit. I did see that tweet. Um, <laughs> I did. I did see that. So I get like, I don't have enough on that. Um, a lot of people are backing him as a human being, but that can happen with the worst of people, right? Like, Oh, this is a fucking the craziest hot take of all time. But people like a lot of people like back the worst people in the world at times, like your Hitler's, your Putin, like those type of people. Your they are back. People like say great things about those people too. There are tons of people that would say yeah. amazing things about them. I so, heard like, Hitler. Hitler was an incredible leader. If we're just going to call balls and strikes here, that is that is whatever that you is, say. I'll take with a real take too. Like of course, it, like anyone that doesn't like can't see like past like oh my god, he was the worst person in the world. But yeah, he got a lot of people to follow. It's a leader. It's a hell of a leader. Like, but like with right. when it goes, might actually can't. But when it goes, to, <laughs> yeah. The walk-ons are pro Hitler. Just want to put like, it out. There. That's right, yeah. Kanye. Um, <laughs> but like, no, like the other one. Like, if you walk into a room and like you're instructed, someone instructs you to clap for that. For like, get out of my face. That's that. that it's the weirdest fucking thing I've ever. But heard. that's uh, but that's on. That's on like on brand. I don't see you can only be elite, Mark. You could never be any other thing but elite. Elite. I don't see Mark Wiseman being a big PJ Fleck guy. No. No, like like the the only thing that we have in common is we're bald as fuck. Yeah, the three <laughs> the three of us could walk into a bar yes. and they'd say, Oh, the, the triplets walked in. That's right. Except for no, like, was, was there he would, he would sprint into it. He yeah, would sprint right. into it ahead of his whole team. Leave everyone behind. <laughs> exactly. It's all about him. Yeah. Right. Is there a creed within the University of Iowa strength staff that is like you will be bald and grow a good beard and lift tons of weights and be cool? Because it was so, like, like check, check, check. Everybody's bald, beard, strong, and cool. But I think like if I'm like I'm pretty sure like Nick, Nick's balding too. Nick is balding. Yeah. I'm balding. Like we're like 
we're doing out of kind of necessity. <laughs> I don't know about Lima. It's too much testosterone, man. The yeah. scalp can't it's handle like, it. <laughs> it's like, I think everyone, like, if they didn't do it, you, we would look ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I can't have, if you, I can't have that ball spot. Like, <laughs> Kluber that was is. trying to rock it for so long. Yeah, we're like, told dude, what talking is about happening? It before, yes. before you guys got on, we were talking about it. I'm the I'm the most Iowa strength conditioning intern that never was. I, right. Honestly, it's um, true. You probably are number one are. that never was. Yeah. You would have got absolutely bullied by the players, but it was a tough summer, man. It's a long, <laughs> long ass days. Waking up at two thirty or whatever you guys did was that's just not it. So those were those were uh, like the intern like that those summer are the prove it days. I, yeah. Okay, here's here's where I'll go with this because yeah. Every year they post that strength conditioning intern like flyer on Twitter. Yeah. Or Facebook. And every year it gets fucking crucified because, because it's unpaid internship. internship. Do you have a rebuttal to that? Because I don't understand I don't I don't have a way to put into words how valuable being a strength intern for Iowa is. But Invaluable. it doesn't matter that it's unpaid for two months or three months. Like it it's so it's so like what whatever you're unpaid with whatever they could pay you with. And if they didn't give you food, it would be the same amount of pay. Yeah. Like if we're being real, like you're yeah. getting a ridiculous amount of food for that to a degree. Having Not said that, of course, like elite gym membership. Yeah, no one in you are. And it's, I don't know the whole thing behind like why it's all unpaid, why there's not like a small stipend. There probably should be a stipend or like housing, like put them in a housing, something yeah. that probably, housing would they, be if sad. there was housing, it would be, that'd be, Probably the, yeah, best the only thing is that it, like it kind of screws over people that don't come from great backgrounds, right? That, yeah, that can't no, afford does. to go somewhere without pay. Agreed, agreed. Like, so th- there's probably some aspect of that as well. Yeah. Um, every school's doing it doesn't mean it's right. They're, they're, they probably should get slightly paid. Like if I'm being real, like in the ma- in like major leagues, I'm pretty sure all professional sports you have to pay interns. There is no free intern. Like you can't like be volunteer. Like you are not even allowed to have that. If someone wanted to volunteer, they couldn't. It's in like illegal. Wow. So, but yeah, they should, someone should be paid. Like they should be paid probably. Like, probably injured. getting about $80 worth of food though every day, right? No, you well, are like, you're getting, you don't have to buy any food. The all the supplements. Summer. Yeah, you're getting, good. yeah. It's, I don't know. That, that that's a, That's a good question. I haven't really thought about that. Like you get a couple hundred dollars worth of textbooks and stuff like that too. Yeah. Like you get like, you get perks to it. you learn. It's like the right. importance of learning it. Like the, sh- the long-term benefit of it is bigger than any short-term money you could get. It's like, cool. You want to go intern at some other place that where not every You're one of those coaches has a connection. Yeah. yeah. Like in the long-term, the investment of going to an unpaid internship at a bigger university is better. Having said that, they probably should get paid. Like now that we're talking about this, they, they should probably because of the workload and like the amount that is kind of expected of the interns. Like, yeah, it was it, they got put to the test every yeah, day. No doubt, no you doubt. Got, they ran the conditioning <laughs> the day before. Didn't at one point wasn't Demarco and them running the conditioning like a week ahead in the summer to test oh, it? Oh yeah, so we, 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 I don't know we about kind you. Kind of had to. But like it's you didn't have to make the times, like there wasn't like you had to make yeah. the times. But like because some of them are, weren't just as good of athletes, right? And they just, yeah. But pulling hamstrings, I'm pretty sure <laughs> one kid definitely pulled his hamstring. We were doing sprints. I don't know if it was. I don't think it was your class, Kevin. But like it, was, it wasn't had, my class. Yeah, no. a kid pulled his hamstring for sure. Poor guy. Um, yeah, oh, remember? Uh, God, what was the guy from Germany's name? He had like a. I remember, remember that had, big boy. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. He had a he had a freaking uh, hernia or something. Yeah, he had the hernia and he had to go home. I remember yeah. that. That's yeah, a remember cool dude, I remember. Yeah. yeah. That's a uh, pull from out of your ass, Kev. That's, oh, yeah. I, that's well, that was that was when I was a senior. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, dude. It intern day is a rough. It's a rough day. You know, you're yes. up at. You're in the building at four o'clock setting up until the six o'clock lift and you run three lift groups. You get like an hour off your feet to eat and then you got to go do the workout yourself. Doyle was nice enough to have me do the advanced group card, which the normal 
interns were just doing yeah. developmental. Did, I did the same thing. Yeah, oh, they, they were doing tempos? Yeah, they had to do deep dive deep. <laughs> you're you're in there at the end of a 10 hour day doing tempo squats oh yeah okay but yeah they're also doing tempo squats percentages um, were low at like 60 yeah. percent Doyle had me on the advanced card like i was still a senior in the program because he just wanted to see like uh I, wa I want i want your feedback on him like yeah okay i'm also losing like 30 pounds over the course of this summer i was getting buried by the squats by the end. oh yeah no doubt <laughs> plus no like doubt. you talk about steps clue it was like uh it was like 20 miles a day. It's like, I think it was like, you'd get between like 40 and 60,000 steps. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Well, cause, especially because the new, like the new facility, the old facility probably would have had a better, like a better chance, but the new facility between going back and forth, back and forth, then you're going out to the Kenyan fields. Oh my God. Yeah. It was, it was a long insane. day on your feet. So yeah. that was probably not a great time for me to try to start intermittent fasting. I shed weight <laughs> so fucking fast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. <laughs> oh, I look good at the end of it, though. No doubt. I have um, a thousand other things I could ask you, Mark, and I'm sure we'll have you back on to, to continue this, but uh, uh, that's it for me tonight. Guys, anything yeah. else? No, nah, man. Always good to catch good. up with you. It was, it was oh, yeah. just too much fun to catch up. I didn't want it to end. Always yeah, good. Always good to shoot the shit with you fellas, man. It doesn't feel like it's like actually a podcast with us. Just literally. That's just how we talking. try and do it, dude. Because yeah, we're just good, three man. bros hanging out, trying to get away from talking to other people. That's it. I know I'm allowed to swear on it, but like if I wasn't, you would have to like, delete this whole thing. Like, there's, nothing, <laughs> there's no clean version of any of what we just said. I've ever dude, I think word. you only said like the F word oh. four times in the whole podcast. Maybe not. Maybe. I, I probably know. said it 14, and Kluver's been notorious <laughs> for saying it more than me. I'll so. say 400, so yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, no, this is um, every time. It's always good. Yeah. Um, whenever, you, whenever you guys, whenever you want to hang out, fucking call me, not even on the podcast, whatever you guys want. Come out and visit Drake and myself in Arizona. Not now. It's a terrible time right now to do yeah, it. Yeah, bad time right now. I'm it's I'm like, gonna text it's, it's you about, about a good time right there right now. I don't even want to go to Arizona right now. No, no, no it's I'll, it's been the most brutal, brutal month of July of all time. One fifteen over day. over one fifteen for like twenty days in a row. That's crazy. Listeners, talk, talk uh, to me in the winter. Talk to me in the winter. Yeah, we'll come up then. <laughs> Listeners, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. Got into the weeds on some, but I think some people were really. Uh, like listen to that conversation. We'll be back next time with another episode. I don't know who or when, but uh, we'll talk then. Peace.